Hey y'all, good morning, good morning. Welcome to the channel here on Andrea Speaks TV. I appreciate you all supporting the channel. Listen, all eyes have been on Georgia, right? All eyes were on Georgia yesterday, uh, December 6th, as several people, you know, uh, went out to cast their vote in this special runoff election between uh, current uh, incumbent Senator uh, Raphael Warnock and Herschel Walker. Okay, you all know right here on the channel, um, I've actually done a video before, uh, maybe a few videos where I've spoken about um, Herschel Walker and how, you know, just based on my research, he and I both shared um, some of the same concerns about our economy as far as uh, food shortages. That's actually the video I did a couple of, um, months back on the channel I'll go and I'll link um, I'll put a link to the video so you all can see it but you know he was talking about food shortages and I believe you know that um, I won't say I believe I know that my coverages of food shortages is very well documented here on the channel I even have a playlist uh, if you want to check it out but <clears throat> you know he was speaking about food shortages his concern about food shortages uh, inflation higher food prices we share some of the same concerns. So that's what really made me, you know, put an ear to what he was saying. Um, but on yesterday here in Georgia, um, the news uh, broke last night. I forgot what time. It was, of course, um, well after, you know, 7 o'clock, the polls closed. Maybe somewhere around 10, 11. I'm not exactly sure. I can't remember. But um, uh, the incumbent, uh, Senator... Uh, Raphael Warnock was uh, projected, or I guess you can maybe say declared, the winner uh, based on the number of um, polls that had reported, um, you know, what people, how people had voted. So, um, Herschel Walker, uh, I put it on the community tab, so please make sure you check out the video. I believe the news station. Um, the news station's video that I shared was ABC News, but make sure you check out um, his speech, okay? He said some good things in his speech, um, and it was overall very positive. You know, sometimes when uh, elections, you know, don't turn out necessarily how you would have liked to have seen it, it should not discourage you, um, you know, from voting um, and exercising your right to vote, I believe. Um, here in Georgia, you know, we still need to continue to fight, um, not physically, okay, I'm not advocating violence, but, you know, standing up for uh, and standing up against uh, the agendas, and I've talked about many of them uh, here on the channel, the agendas that are being pushed, um, you know, here in Georgia, uh, across the country, and even across the world. You know, the fight still continues. You know, we're in a time where, um, and maybe you can agree or disagree with me, but, you know, I've never seen a time like this in my life. You know, and when I got out and voted, you know, I'm thinking about not only what's currently happening, but I'm also thinking about the future. Not only my future, but my child's future, you know. Um, and I've even shared here on the channel about how there is a very concerning, alarming, disturbing agenda um, to confuse the hearts and the minds of our youth, our children. And, you know, uh, we'll talk about, I'll talk about that more in another video, but there are some people, some groups, individuals and groups who are um, pushing and advocating for, even some, you know, politicians, you can do your own research. That's why research is so important, y'all. Don't just vote for someone who is popular um, or, you know, someone who this person endorses or gets behind, you know, or whatever. Actually take time to research, find out what these candidates stand for, okay? When it comes to important legislations and bills that are, you know, being introduced and passed, or I'll say introduced, find out how these candidates voted. Okay, I think that's very important. Um, 
you know, look into what they're standing for. Um, who, you know, I, I've even learned this, you know, okay, I wonder who's funding them. Um, I know here in Georgia, um, it was said that, you know, many, many companies, uh, I say companies, but um, maybe I shouldn't say that because I don't know exactly which companies. I don't want to report any false information, but it was being said that actually both candidates, uh, both Herschel Walker and Raphael Warnock, they both um, were receiving, you know, large amounts of, I guess, campaign donations to assist with their campaign. So, you know, even find out who's funding them, who's standing behind them. Because a lot of times, let's be honest, y'all, the candidates, when they get in office, uh, the politicians, when they get into office, rather, they're going to look out for the people who, you know, supported them, um, who funded them, you know, helped fund their campaign. But here's where, now, I said that, but this is where I have a concern. Now that, um, you know, based on the poll results okay and I don't know at this time it doesn't seem like they will be challenged or there may be a question about the voting here in Georgia I'm not sure okay um, but I can say that at this time from what I know it hasn't gotten to that but I will say this speaking of politicians you know representing the people that fund them and, and put them into office my question is will Raphael Warnock okay we all know um you know who he seemed to have targeted um what his uh, i don't want to say storyline but maybe his political agenda um who it was really geared towards uh i believe you and i both know know that but here's my concern um raphael warnock you know he largely uh championed the black community uh to help keep him and put you know keep him in office is he finally going to um, really represent um, not only the black community, I'll say the black community because that's who he really campaigned for to help him, uh, you know, um, keep his Senate seat. Will he truly um, vote on policies, introduce bills to help empower the very community that he heavily relied on to help keep him in office. Now that I don't know, um, only time will tell. I can say that for the past, what, one year, two years? I can't remember how long it's been now since he has been in office. Um, I don't know if I can really truly speak on any real solutions that he has provided for um, not only the black community, who, like I said, he heavily championed to champion to help him uh, win his seat and keep his seat this time, I can't say that he has truly provided real solutions to um, empower, economically empower uh, his community. You know, I often wonder where does he stand or how does he feel or where does he stand on the topic of reparations? Is he pushing uh, reparations? You know, I've talked about that. If you're new to the channel, I've talked about reparations in the past and that is something that um, descendants of slaves are old here in our country okay i don't think that's to be disputed about that um but i wonder what are his thoughts on that uh, what is he doing to help um you know descendants of slaves um here in america what is he doing to help finally get reparations you know other groups of people are getting funding okay we're as a matter of fact Funding is being sent overseas to help uh, people. I'm not saying they don't need help, but if you're sending money, if you have, if there is money to send overseas, you mean to tell me there's not any money for reparations? So these are things that I'm thinking about. Um, but you know, I pray for him that he, you know, um, when I say him, I'm saying uh, Raphael Warnock, that he. Um, you know that 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 some kind of way he is able to see what's going on and you know i will say this y'all i can't remember the lady's name but you know a lot of times when politicians are affiliated with a particular party sometimes when they see what's going on they end up changing their minds and they go to a different party um you know it's very concerning to me that 
it seems like one particular party, the Democratic Party, has had, and, and I even see it here now, you know, in Georgia, I see it even more. It seems like the Democratic Party has such a stronghold on, um, you know, wanting um, the black community. I'm speaking about the black community because I'm a black woman. The black community, it seems like they have such a stronghold on um, influence when it comes to voting. And that's very concerning to me. Um, I don't know if um, what I let me go back to what I was saying. You know, I, I pray that he is able to um, make decisions that are truly in the best interest of the people. Um, you know, I can pray for that, but like I said, I don't know if that will happen. But um, you know, it's just it's it's just very very uh, concerning. Um, but I don't want to keep you all too long. Uh, like I said, I appreciate your support. Um, what will the next two years or three years or whatever his term is look like for Georgia? I'm not exactly sure. Um, but I tell you what I will do. Now, some things, you know, this is out of my control, right? But I tell, I will tell you this. I'm going to keep preparing. Um, and I'm going to stay encouraged. I'm not sad. Okay, I'm just kind of like, you know, wow. Um, you know, I think if people really saw what he stood for, um, how he has voted, maybe they would have had a change of mind. But I don't know. That's why I say it's so much influence comes into play um, and it's just very concerning how the Democratic Party um, has even used sororities, fraternities, um, different uh, organizations to influence the black vote here um, in the U.S. So y'all take care. Uh, we'll talk more about it. I want to go more in depth, but uh, I've run out of time now. So y'all take care and we'll talk again right here on the channel. Y'all have a blessed day.